boys and girls, and welcome to Tuesday Tales. It's the last Tuesday Tales of the season already. Boy, that went by fast. Today's stories are about teddy bears. Do you have a teddy bear? Do you have a teddy bear you've had for a long time? Do you have a brand new teddy bear? Is your favorite teddy bear actually brown or is it purple and green? Teddy bears come in all shapes and sizes and this is my teddy bear. My husband gave this one to me and he's a jointed teddy bear. He's joining us for our story times today, but first I need to tell a joke. All right, here it goes. Why did my teddy bear refuse dessert? Because he was already stuffed. Stopped. <laughs> Get it? He was stopped. <laughs> My silly stuffed teddy bear. Our first book today is called Lewis. It's by Tom Lichenhell, illustrated by Julie Rowan Zock, and published by Houghton Mifflin. Here we go. Now this story is told from the teddy bear's point of view. From day one, things have gone downhill. So he was brand new out of the box and the boy has used him to go down the banister. I've been a pillow, a hanky, ew, a hanky. You're not supposed to do that to your teddy bear. Lunch for a prehistoric beast? Nom, 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 nom. I've been buried alive, thrown into a hurricane, a washing machine, and hung out to dry. Ooh, he's getting grouchy. I've been left to the mercy of wild animals. Poked by needles. Well, yeah, after the wild animal, the dog got to him. Somebody had to sew him up. <laughs> and made an accessory to a crime. What's the crime, boys and girls? Somebody's scaring their sister. That's not nice. I've been x-rayed, milk sprayed, and mislaid. <gasps> Where did he forget him? On the bus, oh no, hope he gets him back. I can bear it no longer. The next time this kid squeezes me, I am out of here. Oh, but he's getting so, so nice. Well, no sense running away in the rain. He's softening up a little bit. He likes getting those hugs. <laughs> but as soon as little sister wraps up this party, I am packing my bags. <laughs> sister put a headband and a necklace on him. I think he's a little bit embarrassed. Well, meanwhile, I need to build up my strength for the getaway. Not too embarrassed to eat a treat, though, is he? He'll stick around for that. Seriously, right after we do our show and tell routine, I am history. At show and tell, the boy is explaining how he left the bear on the bus and how worried he was, and he calls him one brave bear. Oh, that's sweet. I know, I know, we're awesome. Okay, this is perfect. Minute that light goes out, I'm off like a dirty shirt, making like a tree and leaving. Okay, now. Come on, Lewis, you silly bear. On second thought, a bear could do worse. 
<laughs> he gets big smooches and hugs and cuddles, so he's going to stay. Uh, Lewis is a love bear, and he did go missing that one time. What happens when a teddy bear goes missing? That can get kind of scary. Our second book is called Where's My Teddy? And it's written and illustrated by Jez Asborough and published by Candlewick Press. Eddie's off to find his teddy. Eddie's teddy's name is Freddy. So we can guess by the first page that this is a rhyming book. And I also want you to see how big this forest is and how little Eddie is. Ooh. <laughs> He's so tiny in this big forest. He lost him in the woods somewhere. It's dark and horrible in there. Help, said Eddie. I'm scared already. I want my bed. I want my teddy. He tiptoed on and on until something made him stop quite still. Look out, he thought. There's something there. What's that? A giant teddy bear. Is it Freddy? said Eddie. What a surprise. How did you get to be this size? Now look how tiny Eddie is. And if Eddie had a teddy bear, he would be even smaller. And look how huge this bear is. Oh my goodness, how's he even going to carry him? You're too big to huddle and cuddle, he said. And I'll never fit both of us in my bed. He could probably use that teddy bear as a bed, though. Look how tiny he is compared to that big bear. Then out of the darkness, clearer and clearer, the sound of sobbing got nearer and nearer. What does sobbing sound like? Something like this. <laughs> Soon the whole woods could hear the voice fall. How did you get to be so tiny and small? You're too small to huddle and cuddle, it said. And you'll only get lost in my giant-sized bed. What could be happening? <gasps> it was a gigantic bear and a tiny Teddy stomping toward the giant Teddy and Eddie. I bet you can figure out what happened, can't you? This giant bear has a teddy bear, and Eddie has a teddy bear, but there's been a mix up. My Ted! gasped the bear. A bear! screamed Eddie. A boy! yelled the bear. My Teddy! cried Eddie. Here goes Teddy. He dropped him when he found his, his right bear. He dropped the little tiny bear. Ah! Then they ran and they ran through the dark woods back to their homes as fast as they could all the way back to their snuggly beds where they huddled and cuddled their own little Teds. <laughs> little tiny teddy bear in bed with Eddie. Great big teddy bear in bed with the big bear. So we had two bear stories and a bear joke. Now it's time for our bear craft. In your packet, you'll find a bear to color. I always think it's good to color first because once you cut pieces out, it's harder to color because of all those edges. So you could color the whole thing first 
and then cut out on the dashy lines, and then you'll see some X's. There are some X's on each piece. Those are there for a reason. You need a grown-up maybe to help you, unless you have a hole puncher. If you have a hole puncher, you could probably do it yourself. You make a hole where those little X's are, and we can make our own jointed teddy bears. Remember, I told you that my teddy bear was jointed. His arms can move, his head can move, his legs can move. Good thing he doesn't have a tail, because I don't know how we'd make that move. So once you've colored all your pieces, you can lay them out. The head goes on top as always. Then the body, then there's two legs, and two arms. There are different ways to join them together. You could use the brass fasteners. A brass fastener looks, um, looks a little bit like a nail, but it splits on one side and opens up, and it helps connect things. So you can connect his leg by poking it through the body and poking it through the leg. And then you fold it open on the other side. And then he has a leg that moves. You could also use a pipe cleaner. You could stick the pipe cleaner through the hole. Stick the pipe cleaner through the leg. And just give it a little twisty twist. And you have another leg that moves. You could also use string. Poke the string through the hole. And poke the string through the hole on the body. And just do a quick, it doesn't have to be a super tight knot because your teddy bear isn't going anywhere. So you can do that. Or if you really don't want it to move around too much, you could take a glue stick, put a little glue on, and glue a piece on. I'm just going to do the very last piece, which is his other arm. And I have a jointed teddy. Now my teddy can move around a bit here and there. I glue sticked his head, so his head's not going to go from side to side, but the rest of him can. All right, boys and girls. So that is the end of the Teddy Bear Tuesday Tales. I hope you have a wonderful vacation time. I hope you get to celebrate and hang out with your family. And I will see you when we start back up again in the middle of January. I look forward to it. Bye-bye, boys and girls.